What's up everybody? So, another video for the day and I was going to try and avoid Brexit. However, I did come across this article by Lord Lilly on the Brexit Central website. Well worth a read, a bit long, but what we're going to do, we'll, we'll go through a bit of it and I'll talk you through the bits that he kind of went a bit longer on. So... The Supreme Court has ruled that the prorogation of Parliament was illegal. That is now just that is now the law, so the government must and will obey it, like we obey Acts of Parliament. But just as we can criticize an Act of Parliament, we are entitled to criticize this judge made law. The issue of prorogation itself is of secondary importance. When the decision to prorogue Parliament was announced, I was at a dinner in France and everyone asked what it meant. I convinced I could not see what it achieved since it would not stop a rogue majority of MPs uh, again passing an act in two days to force government to postpone leaving the EU, uh, which I'd like to say that's exactly what happened, wasn't it? True, it would stop Parliament meeting during the conference recess, but no one has suggested that it should. Even though Parliament will now meet, it can achieve nothing that it couldn't do after the 14th of October. Indeed, Parliament will look pathetic if it meets during the conference recess, but then refuses to call an election or hold a vote of confidence. So that, uh, that's an interesting way of looking at things, and I think I agree. If we start seeing all these MPs coming back during this season, what's that going to look like? That's going to look like a very... But unbalanced house and they won't get anything done anyway so continuing on this prorogation itself may not matter much but the supreme court's decision nonetheless raises disturbing issues who should make the law on what basis and to whom should those who make the law be accountable so going a bit off here and, and summarizing what he goes on to say he basically says the role of the court is to apply the law and assess evidence as to whether defendants have obeyed them now the supreme court is taking on more of a role like the u.s um supreme court the european uh, court of human rights and the european court of justice and what they do is they develop new laws derived not from a statute or a president precedent but from vague abstract principles um, in practice what this means is that judges can make laws subjectively so the worrying aspect of the supreme court ruling is that n it nowhere discusses either the direct precedent or statute so the article goes on there was no mention in the Supreme Court ruling of John Major's proroguing Parliament for 19 days preventing discussion of the cash for questions report, no prorogations in Canada and similar jurisdictions. There was no mention that the Fixed Term Parliaments Act 2012 explicitly stated that it did not curtail the prerogative power to prorogue. Still less does it even discuss whether government has the duty to use all legitimate means to prevent Parliament thwarting the democratic decision of the sovereign people to leave the EU. So, this is where it gets interesting. What are the implications of what the Supreme Court has ruled? So, number one, the law is not clear and knowable as possible. So if we have to wait to hear what the judges think, how can even the Prime Minister know what the law is? Secondly, if judges make the law in line with their subjective preferences, the only people you can know the law in advance are those familiar with the, the judge's personal views. You may have read in, uh, in the newspapers a while back about the Supreme Court judges um, who expressed disbelief that anybody could support Brexit. And in fact, we heard that from the BBC the other day, the BBC leadership. They can't believe why anyone would support Brexit. That's how out of touch they are. So, uh, with the Supreme Court believing that way, this is the main reason that we were advised the court would find against the government in advance. This is why we were hearing all those things leading up to the, um, the findings. Okay, so third, we've got to consider when 
most of the senior judges feel free to make new laws based on their own personal prejudices. The, 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 the role of the judges and the judiciary will become political. And unfortunately, what this ruling is, is a really dangerous step in that direction. And fourthly, as judges move in that direction of making their own laws, respect for the judiciary and the law itself will be eroded. We expect our judges to apply the law impartially, not to be partisans of one political party or another. So, what, was, what this article is, and I, I strongly suggest you read it, it does say and suggests that the government must obey this ruling, but it doesn't mean we can't criticise it. In addition to their failure to consider precedents, it means judges are taking it upon themselves the right to derive new laws and becoming politicised based on their political views. One final line from this article. Regardless of our views on prorogation or Brexit, we should urge the judges to return to applying existing law, not inventing it. And I think that's a very good line to end on. What do you think? Let me know in the comments, uh, the comment section below. Like, share, subscribe if you appreciate what we do.